Welcome back to All New Whole Creations. I'm your host, Ryan Odman. Today I'm going to be interviewing my friend and my coworker, Miss Jennifer P. She's been such a big blessing to my life, and I believe she could be a blessing to yours. She has a powerful story of learning to overcome the effects of dealing with mental health situations in her life. So I believe this could be very beneficial to you and regarding your life, your health, your mental health, and let's go. You are now watching Whole Creations. Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan Odman, and this is my friend, Jennifer. Hi, nice to meet you guys. <laughs> We're both great coworkers, and she's been such a big blessing to my journey. I'm going to cry right now because she has been such a big blessing to my <laughs> journey working in the special needs field for the past two and a half years at our current job. I'm going to ask Jennifer to share her story because she has such an amazing story that I believe could be so beneficial to people out there. But at the same time, I want to know um, what has drawn her into working in this field in the first place. So, Jennifer, what has drawn you to want to work in the special needs field? Well, it's kind of funny, Ryan, just because, like, I started 14 years ago in this field. Um, I needed a job, and my friend was like, hey, do you want to come work with me? And I was like, what do you do? And she was like, oh, I work with kids. And I was like, okay, that's cool. But at the same time, my nephew, um, he was diagnosed with autism. So I had no clue what any of this was about, but I would just job. Like, I can work with kids and I can find out what's going on with my nephew, which is really cool. So I actually started out with the infant toddler program at my old job. So I was working with kids ages zero to three years old. And the first week or so I fell in love. Like I was like, how did I not know what I wanted to do until now? Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I've just been a part of the field and I love it. And I couldn't see myself doing anything else. That's amazing. I didn't know about your, I, I didn't know about your nephew. Explain a little bit more about him to me. Well, um, my nephew, uh, he was diagnosed with autism. Um, he's a little bit higher on the higher functioning level. Um, when he was little, it took him a few years to like talk. So my brother and his girlfriend kind of knew like something was kind of off because like at the age of three, he was still not talking. He was like mumbling here and there. But back then, like autism wasn't such a huge thing and nobody knew what was going on, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, that was kind of difficult and hard for the family just because we didn't know how to go about things. We didn't know what was wrong with him. Um, early intervention uh, wasn't a thing back then until, you know, a little bit later. So uh, it was just, you know, hard on the family, just not knowing what autism really was. Right. But you could say through, through your family's love and dedication, it has definitely benefited your nephew most definitely. So. Oh, yes, totally. You know, um, just with the patients that we have, we finally got them services. Uh, a therapist used to come to our house every to, like two hours for three days a week, which was good. Like, thank God for regional center to get him all those things that he needed. Um, and now he's fine. He's talking. Um, he's 22 years old now. He's in college. Um, if anything, it was just his speech delay and like a lot of tantrums here and there. Gotcha. But other than that, he's doing well and doing great. Mm, it's amazing. I love stories like that. Hearing about how people that were known to be on, known to be on the spectrum, how they still end up going to college, which is amazing. So that's cool. Yeah, it's possible. Anything's possible. It's just, you know, how you attack it and how you deal with things and having a positive attitude about it and having such a supportive family as well. Yeah. Helped a lot. And I, I think another thing is, and I haven't really heard that many talks or conversations about this, but having, having self-awareness for yourself when you're on the spectrum is a huge thing. So for me, I know that what's helped me through these past few years of learning to overcome challenges of, of knowing, being known to have someone, being, no, being known as someone with autism, what has helped me tremendously is knowing who I am because it's when I know who I am and having this belief that I can overcome anything that comes my way, it changes the whole atmosphere around me because it's what's going on within where I go ahead. I can, like you said, shared, I can go and attack the situation. 
And I think what helps for him, too, is like he's not alone, like knowing that there are other people out there that are like him, you know. And I think that's like the biggest thing is like you're never alone. There's other people going through the same thing that you're going through. Like, so just keep fighting and, you know, keep mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. This this is going a little further. So like for me growing up, um, like in high school or middle school and even elementary school, my mom put me into social groups with other people that have autism and through those social groups and great coordinators, I, it's helped me tremendously. So yeah, thank God for regional center and all these different services that help you um, in regards to oh, like learning how to socialize and to overcome challenges with autism. So was your nephew in any social um, groups or gatherings with other people? Um, not really, because back then that was like, what, 14, 15 years ago. So there wasn't a lot of services back then other than like the behavior therapy and the speech therapy. Gotcha. But I feel like if he did go back then, it would help him a lot more to because it like, to be honest, it took him a long time to like acclimate to like a general ed. Like he was always the oddball. Everyone always like made fun of him mm -hmm. and whatnot. And so it was kind of sad, but at the same time, like he was able to surpass that and overcome whatever he was going through mm -hmm. with just, you know, I, I felt bad because there'd be times where he would come home from school and every, he would be like crying. And then like, we'd be like, what's wrong? Right. You know? And then he'd be like, oh, they're making fun of me by the way we, they talk or I talk, blah, 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 blah. And like, it, it just broke my heart, you know, just because it wasn't his fault. And he's, he's just like them yeah, yeah. he's not any different yeah. you know so but i'm i'm glad that like there are things out there like social group and like community outings and whatnot like it's really really important to like help uh, like kids generalize with other kids you know mm -hmm. just because they think they're special right and that they're alone and isolated Exactly. Which is sad because, you know, you should never feel like that. Like, if anything, I feel like having autism is like a superpower. <laughs> it can be the greatest gift when you look at the strengths aspect of being able to focus on something tremendously very well. So, yeah. It is. <laughs> So um, well, who is someone that you have looked up to working in this field? Oh, Ryan, that's a hard one. It's a really, really hard one. My old school, I've come in contact with a lot of good, good teachers. Mm -hmm. I was at that old school for 10 years. Oh, wow. So like each one of them like played a certain role to like who I am today. And just seeing like their hard work, their dedication, the compassion that they had for these kids was just another, like, it was mind blowing. Like these kids were so receptive to every one of these teachers. These kids were learning so much. They're, they were starting to talk. They were learning so many skills. And then on top of that, just seeing the parents being so happy with these parents and making a difference in their lives, like made me be like, wait, I'm in the right place. I am where I need to be. And I'm sure that along the way, there's going to be more people that are going to be, you know, a role model to me. But I got to tell you, like every teacher that in that is in special ed is pretty much my role model because that's not an easy job. Yeah. You, you work at work and then you take that home just because how can you not? You're so connected to these kids. You're always constantly thinking of how can I do better? Um, could I have done anything differently? You know, there was this one kid that um, he, he was on PEX. PEX is called Picture Exchange Communication. So it's little icons where like, in order for you to talk, you pretty much give the icon to the other person and um, you get whatever the item is. And we were working on it for like four months or no, four years with this kid. Mm -hmm. And this teacher was like, no, like the, the parent was about to give up. And this one teacher was like, no, like we got to keep doing that. Like he's getting it. Don't worry. He's getting it. And then that one final moment where he literally picked up the icon off the book 
and like handed it to the speaker was the most amazing thing ever that we were able to get that on tape. And the mother just started crying because like forever, forever we were trying and like they wanted to give up, but like we didn't. And thankfully we didn't because now the kids, he's able to talk and like communicate. And that's like the number one thing that the mom always wanted. And it was just such an experience that I was being a, that I was able to be a part of, you know, being in this field is great. You know, sometimes it burns people out and sometimes you just keep thriving, you know, and I get it. It's a really hard job, but at the same time, like you just got to look at the bigger picture for everyone. Yeah. I, I think too, um, with what you, were, what you were sharing about the teachers, when they go home, they may ask themselves, did I do enough? Did I do this? Did I do this right? I think we, us as human beings, we all go through that situation where we wonder, did this happen? Did this happen? Could I have done this? The second guessing game that goes on in your mind, and it, it's like a little hamster just going around and around. But I've had, I've been learning that every small thing that you do can outweigh any big thing that you may have done that may be wrong, that may be wrong in that moment. The more that you focus on what is true, good and pure and right and great to those kids, the more the second guessing game has to stop in your mind. It already, it has already been taken care of. You're already achieving things because you know that, hey, like if you just, basically love that student with one little seed, it can outweigh all the bad seeds in their life, so. Exactly. All you have to do is just put all those overthinking away because you alone being there for them already is a big, huge step. Because if you think about it, they've already been abandoned by so many people in their lives, you know? And it's just really important that you share that love and compassion with them and let them know that they are loved and that they are being taken care of and everything just goes away. You know, that's all they need. They really, that's, you know. I'm just thinking of that one song. What the world (laughs) needs now. Yes. (laughs) Okay. Anyway. So back to the interview. (laughs) (laughs) Can you share with us your own story? Here's the big thing, guys. This is the big thing that I really want you guys to hear because I really believe it could be beneficial in your life audience. So, Miss Jennifer, can you share with us your own story of overcoming your own challenges that you've had to go through personally? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me if I cry, but um, I've been dealing with depression and anxiety for pretty much most of my life. Uh, I got diagnosed with depression at the age of 14. Um, And that was really hard as well, just because like back then, like mental health wasn't a huge thing. And I felt like I was alone. I felt like something was wrong with me. And I didn't know what was wrong with me just because there was nothing about mental issues or depression or anxiety out there. And I remember telling my dad, like, I just feel so low and I feel so down. And he was like, but why, why? Like you're, you have a good life. And I was like, I can't explain it. It's just in my head. It's just in my mind. Like, and it was really frustrating because like he was right. Like I did have a good life, like nothing bad happened to me. So I don't know why I should be feeling sad, but then he started to do a little bit of research and um, there was these anxiety, depression uh, DVDs. That's how old I am. (laughs) And so each DVD, I would be like a chapter of like what depression was, what anxiety was, how to cope with it and how to deal with it. And that like helped me a lot, you know, just because being a young child or teenager and not knowing what was going on and feeling so alone and helpless. And I, I didn't know what to do, you know, and there was times where, um, it got so bad and I went into a dark, dark place that I actually tried to commit suicide. And I tried to commit suicide three times. And I remember the third time they put me in a mental institution. And that was probably the last draw for me because I was just like, I, I need to do something about this. Like I can't live my life like this. And so that's when I started to seek help. 
I went to a psychologist, I went to a psychiatrist and, you know, I always believe like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take meds. Like I, you know, meds are not for me, blah, 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 blah. But my mind just kept going and going, started overthinking and sort of, and I just, I needed it to stop. And so finally I put my foot down and I was like, okay, like I'll take some meds and, you know, depression, anxiety, you just don't take a pill and it just goes away. But like the meds that I were on helped me regulate my feelings and what I was going through. And I finally was able to lean myself off of these meds, which was great. And now that mental health has become like a little bit more into the spotlight, I finally realized that I wasn't alone in what I was dealing with, which was nice because again, I felt like, oh my God, I'm crazy. Like what, what is happening to me? Why me? Like, what did I do? You know? And then I just learned that like, once I started to feel depressed and anxious, because like I, I had nobody to talk to, nobody understood what I was going through, but now I started to open up my feelings and started talking to, to people of how I was feeling, and what I was going through. And that helped me so much with my depression and my anxiety. And when I do feel like I'm getting depressed or anxious, I start to do a lot more self-care, you know, like meditating, um, going out for walks, uh, exercising. And then on top of everything, like last year, I was really, really feeling low and um, depressed. And I wasn't going to take my life away, but it was just one of those where I just, I hated my life. I, I didn't want to live anymore. And a miracle happened and I got pregnant and now I have a son to think about and take care of. So that helped a lot. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your story, Jennifer. Um, man, I'm blown away by all this. Um, just to piggyback off of what Jennifer was sharing to everybody out there, because I, I want people to realize that sharing your story of overcoming suicide is a big deal and met, some, some of you already know this, but I'm going to share this again because maybe some of you that are watching haven't heard my testimony, but um, for many years, I've always wanted to move out to California from Charlotte, and I failed the class that was supposed to get me going to go to San Francisco Art Institute, and that was a big dream lost in my eyes, and so I went home and attempted suicide by electrocuting myself my mom's bathtub drunk. And from that place of realizing I was still alive for a reason, there was just this joy that was inexpressible where for me later on, Jesus Christ revealed himself to me so powerfully, so mightily. And I realized I was still alive for a reason so great and so powerful. And so I've, I too have had my fair share of depressing moments. And whenever thoughts come like, oh, you're lonely, oh, you're, depressed whenever these thoughts come like earlier today I was getting ice cream and I don't know why just thoughts out of nowhere saying you're lonely came to my mind I'm like no in Jesus name I'm free and God is with me and I'm a new person and it's been six years since that suicide no actually seven years since that suicide attempt and here I am more alive than ever been and I'm working with great people like Jennifer in my life and learning not to live disabled more but more than able through Christ Jesus and that's my life story so everyone out there whoever's going through depression or anxiety or any suicidal thoughts I really just want to encourage you you are alive right now for a reason and God is calling you to live above and beyond than you can ever imagine so don't limit yourself homegirl or homeboy out there you have life to give to the world around you God made you for a purpose far greater than you could ever imagine so be encouraged and I also want to encourage people out there right now with this uh, story as well, because I love how Jennifer shared her story about being on medication for a while. I've been on, I've at, there was a time where I was on medication since I was seven years old to treat the autism and ADD and all that stuff. And I felt so ashamed. I felt so ashamed with taking medicine. So for any of you out there that feel that feel ashamed for taking medication, please don't feel ashamed. Please don't feel ashamed. You 
are greater than those than those substances. And I want to encourage you with that, with this. Um, 2018, I felt the need to start weeding off. And so for from 2018 to 2020, I was weeding off completely. And then this past year, July 2020, so almost a year ago, I've been fully off the medication. Now there have been times where things may come up, but I have to just keep on using my resources, God first, then people around me, just then journaling about it, and just being wide open to the fact that, hey, God's got me. And now it's almost been a year since I've been off the medication and man. <laughs> so just be encouraged. You're, you're here for a reason. And yes. Yeah. And if you ever feel super low in your life and you can't take it anymore, reach out, talk to somebody. You're not alone. Trust me. I promise you, you can give me a call, Ryan, a call, anybody a call, <laughs> yeah. but you're, it's okay to feel what you're feeling. Just know that you're loved no matter what. And we'll always be here. Yeah. How, mm-hmm. So Jennifer had a son recently named Skylar. How's Skylar doing? Skylar's doing well. He's getting big. He's huge. I mean, time flies. Everyone's like, you better take it for what it is. And I was like, I know. I'm, I'm just savoring every moment with him. So he's turning three months tomorrow. Mm-hmm. it's a trip but i thank god for him my little miracle angel baby i uh recently just lost my father last year so i feel like skylar he's like reincarnated into skylar which is nice because you know yeah life always has that little transfer over and oh go ahead. yeah Sorry. no go for it no it's it's true like i remember like every time there's a death in my family, there's always a, a person in our family that has another baby. So yeah, it's funny how that life, how that cycle works in a way. So, yeah. It's just life, beautiful life. <laughs> but I'm just grateful for everything. My baby, you, life. And trust me, I might seem like I'm okay all the time. And I'm, you know, all of us go through stuff. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're here for a purpose. And now my purpose is for Skylar. Yeah. What's helped me recently is I, I don't allow myself to be consumed by the problem, but see myself as overcoming the problem. So it's always important to know what the solution is whenever thoughts come into your mind. So. Yes, that's very, very important. Don't let those thoughts eat you alive. But they're just thoughts, really. Just one out here through the other. <laughs> it's like, what, what is it? When a, there's some weird, ana- no, it's not even an analogy. When a bird lays chick or bird, I don't even know. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> just don't need to keep them there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nobody likes bird poop on your head. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching. You guys are amazing and be blessed on your future endeavors with wherever you're going in life. So, all right. Bye everybody. Heavenly Father, um, thank you everyone for watching uh, and for just really getting something that they needed in order to live on. In Christ Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. Amen.